framing what you're doing perpendicular to the straight up like axis I guess so for him he should be holding to the left or right uh, as he gets hit like a pressure option and like it's like okay if you take it um, I just made this skin the other day it's not really complete I was just messing around but yeah if you guys want a modding tutorial I could do that too welcome back everybody today I'm gonna be discussing that you should probably know about melee these things aren't going to make you uh the best player ever automatically uh it's just knowledge that uh yeah you basically don't have to go find yourself because i've compiled it all here for you so um this is kind of a build off of my first melee video which has to do with uh pretty much all the basic mechanics in the game but there were a few things that i uh left out and that i made mistakes on and let's just get this straight that melee is an extremely complicated game and it would take probably 50 hours to go through all the different things in this game there's so many just random things that aren't necessary but like the stuff i tried to teach you guys in the last one and this are more like the stuff that actually matters that is good and not so much about game theory and like how to play necessarily that was for more like the other video I just made, if you haven't watched, check that out. But, um, yeah, so I'm just gonna touch up on more things that I missed, um, or like, they aren't necessarily beginner techniques, but they're just things that, um, it's important to know, uh, in some aspects. So, the first thing is DI, which I never talked about for some reason in my first one. Um, it's kind of funny because I think one of the reasons why, um, like you can very easily distinguish between a casual player and not is their ability to DI and DIing is um yeah basically really important so um all it is I'll put it in the simplest terms um DI stands for just directional influence and they're so basically if you look at the top of the screen now you can see um the inputs that are going in so for a wave dash and you look in the top uh, left I'll zoom in for you have wave shining like you can follow the technique um, as I do it now I'm messing up of course but Um, let's put his um, 
percentage up higher, I guess. Let me just do some damage to him. Um, but yeah, so now if I up smash him, these frames right now are the only times he can actually do anything. But as soon as um, I let go, like for instance, like right now, you can, if I um, if I was Mario and this was a pause buffer, you could just hold whatever direction you need during the pause and then let go and it, you would see the immediate effect of it. Um, but yeah, so it looks like he died a little bit to the right. I think he could have lived that if he died better. Um, but yeah, basically, actually I don't know if anyone can live Fox Up Smash at 115. But um, yeah, anyway, the, the point of DI is to live longer. It's not something that um, I would say well, it's hard to say, right? Like, it's very necessary to be good, but, like, in a casual setting, um, it doesn't affect your play style in the sense that, um, I mean, I guess a DI mix-up is a type of, like, play style influence it would have, like, you know, you trying to mess with your opponent's DI, so, for instance, if I've been constantly running up and forward smashing, which foxes don't typically do, well, now he's gonna start DIing, or if he's gonna, you know, predict the forward smash, he'll be DIing up for it. Instead, well, if he DIs up on an up smash, he's gonna get absolutely destroyed because that's gonna hurt him. You want to be holding to the left or the right, so like a DI mix up is, I guess, what it brings to the table as far as your play style, but for the most part, uh, DI um, isn't gonna change the way you play that much. Um, so just practice DI a little bit. Um, it's one of those things, it just comes naturally after a while. I mean, I'm not very good at DI better in the newer games just because it, it, it's honestly just simpler not to DI. But, yeah, so the next thing would be, uh, so a ledge drop turnaround. So, I can actually show you this with Fox, but someone like Marth is a little bit more obvious. So, basically, um, characters that have a walk that ends with a little bit of, like, slidiness, if that makes sense. So, like, if you watch another train, I feel like my videos are famous for having trains in it. I'd have to look at, like, the recording time of all my videos and see, like, do I always record when this certain, like, train route goes by? Um, I quit it out, but it, I don't think it's actually gonna be that loud on camera. So, anyway, if you watch Mars, um, you know, walking animation, this only works while walking, by the way, but if you walk with Mars and let go, look at my stick at the top, um, and then when I stop actually moving, my stick is in the center, but he still slides a little bit. Well, during that slide, you can just turn around and basically slide off the ledge and then grab the ledge. So I'll show you what this looks like. If you just walk to the ledge, get it right, and turn around at like the last second, you can just turn off and grab the ledge. And you can also combine this with a fast fall. Um, I'm not really doing this well. Um, let me try this again without this Mario interfering. Blame it on him, I just am not very good at it. Um, I swear I'm turning around, but I'm like turning around again. Um, so anyway, what this is useful for is just another way to get to the ledge quickly. Because um, if you can combine this with a fastball, like I was saying, let me get one real quick. I swear to God, this Mario is really annoying. Um, but yeah, if I walk to the ledge, turn around, try it again. Like that, that's an extremely fast way to get to the ledge. And this is definitely a technique worth practicing with you have if you have a drifty character that um, can do this a little bit better. For the most part though, this would be less consistent than just wave dashing. Um, it might be like a little bit faster depending on your character. So definitely something good to learn. But um, yeah, that's kind of how all these techniques are. Like they're good to learn, but they're still, um, there's, there's just so much. I can't even try to like downplay any of these things. It's all really important. Um, because all these things add up, so, okay, these 20 individual techniques on the road might not help you, but having all of them, um, at once is really helpful, so, yeah, so, yeah, now I'm gonna show you another technique, um, this one, I think, pertains to all double jumping characters, um, and by double jump, I mean, like, actually, that is kind of weird to think about, so, like, I guess characters that's double jump is like cancelable if that makes sense so like Ness, Mewtwo, Yoshi and I guess Peach but yeah basically uh, if you watch this um, if I run and then 
double jump um, as soon as I go off the ledge, but turn around as well, I can instantly grab the ledge. And so what that basically just allows you to do is I'm pretty sure you get armor during the double jump, so it's like an invincible way to grab ledge if you aren't invincible. Otherwise, um, I have to look up the exact frame data of when um, that works, but um, but you can do it from really far away as well. Um, you can kind of jump out and do that. That's, that's pretty far away. You don't have to actually immediately do it. Um, you just have to be kind of at a lower level than the, or like, I guess not lower, like when you double jump, Yoshi's kind of like dips down a little bit, like before you do it, uh, like before it actually kind of raises you up. And I think that's when like he's technically falling and can grab ledge because there's a video by Awesome Sauce that, um, I think that's how you say his name. Um, I'll link a bunch of good videos um, about melee that he's made, but basically one about ledge grabbing and that you have to be falling down to grab a ledge. And so since the double jump of these characters like starts with a little bit of a downward um, like momentum, I guess you can grab the ledge during it, which is pretty cool. Um, I think that is what that means. But yeah, and so. would be multi-shining so um in my first video i mistake or made a mistake of calling wave shining uh multi-shining um this was i don't know why because i like had watched videos before and knew what multi-shining was and i just thought like jump canceling even though technically you're jump canceling then wave dashing would still be considered multi-shining but the true multi-shining involves no wave land so it's just straight up jump cancel shines over and over again so they're very obvious when they come out because they're quicker um then yeah wave shine so the quickest way to do these is to like press the b button and then slide your finger from y down to b again so you can get a grounded multi shine like i did right there and again um and so all this basically lets you do is um um and so what it allows you to do is get off super quick shines um so if they shield the first one for instance it's hard not to press the a button it's just really like a pressure option and like it's like okay if you did get beat by my first shine then i have another one waiting for you like immediately after it's just another way because shine is frame one and i think invincible like completely if as long as the hitbox is like clash so there's no like better double frame one interaction than multi shining um it's not a frame by frame the quickest i guess you could do it It'd be whatever frame you can start jump canceling on which i'm pretty sure is two so you could go shine one frame um so actually i inputted the shine i don't know why i didn't come back as quick a jab but if i shine this one frame and then I, it'd be good to have like a test tool for this, but basically shine one frame, um, jump the next, then shine again. Like you could do out of the, those three frames, two of them are invincible. Um, so yeah, you can actually see my inputs. That's why I really like this overlay. But um, yeah, it's just a good way to get pressure off. It's not this. This was not multi shining. Um, so that's my bad. I'm giving misinformation. And that's still fast, and I think it's more consistent than trying to do this every time you run up and shine, having to go slide your thumb down. Maybe it's just like my technique is bad, but uh, yeah. So, okay, so now, uh, next thing is proper moon walking. So, in the last um, video, I like was still not 100% sure about moonwalking walking with every character. But now I know that you can and walk with every character. It's just the way you have to do it is different. So you see how I'm actually moonwalking to ledge with Fox, even though Fox isn't a character that's necessarily like known to be able to walk. And that's because, um, yeah, basically some characters can walk without an initial, um, I guess walk first. So if you watch my stick up there, I'll wait till the background's different so it's more easy to see. I'm 
so stupid. I'm so stupid. That stage is just as bad. Okay, what stage is dark? I guess Battlefield's a good one. Yeah, Battlefield's probably okay. Okay, yeah, so basically you're gonna wanna hold exactly left or right and then dash back. So just practice doing that, walking, then dashing back, walking, then dashing back, walking, then dashing back, walking, then dashing back, walking, I know, walking, then dashing back. And then after that dash back, you wanna roll the stick under. So look at my control at the top. See how I'm rolling it under? And this is because when you do your dash and are in your dash animation, the game is using your joystick to calculate your speed. Uh, and so when you like basically dial it, like roll it under while that dash animation is happening, it's telling the game to basically um, put you going backwards. So even though you're dashing forwards, it's gonna put you backwards because you've rolled underneath. And the reason you roll underneath is so you don't accidentally get another dash input. Um, which would obviously make you just dash back the other way. So you basically want to be walking towards the ledge. You want to moonwalk, like, or just basically the direction you want to moonwalk towards. Then dash back the other way, then roll the stick back around. And this will take a little bit of practice to get used to. But, um, yeah, I wouldn't say this is exactly a useful technique, but it's a very cool one. Um, so yeah, that's the next technique. It's just, um, yeah, moonwalking. And this, this works with every character, um, and depending on your character, it looks like cooler and longer. I also made the mistake of saying, because I watched my video because I've got such good feedback on it, like that um, I wanted to basically correct any and all mistakes that I made. So one thing I don't know if I touched on was this. I said the Cal Captain Falcon's not ex an easy character to move with. That is, for me personally, from his initial dash and then rolling it back, I don't find him extremely easy to move out with. But if you do that same technique I just talked about where you walk, then dash, okay, Mario, please, um, where you walk, Mario, please stop, um, you walk and then dash back, this walk is actually insanely good, um, see, I like that, I mean, I just slid all the way up the stage, no problem, um, and walk and cut the fuck, just because, um, yeah, I've been playing this, like, this kind of new first step, um, and yeah, the next thing, I don't know if I cover this either, but Captain Falcon and Ganon both get their double jump back when you down B. So as you saw right there, I used my double jump to go out. I got it back from the down B and was able to double jump again. Um, so that's Falcon and Ganon exclusive. But yeah, um, just remember that if you ever play them. Um, and so the next thing. Okay, so another thing is basically I wouldn't call it a teeter cancel necessarily but i'll show you my modded skin i made for yoshi as well um so basically i'll just show you this off real quick um i just made this skin the other day it's not really complete i was just messing around but yeah if you guys want a modding tutorial i could do that too um but yeah so anyway if you wanted to wave dash off a ledge man i really should just go in training mode this one the control stick doesn't matter as much so i'll just go in training mode for this one um all right okay okay so basically if you want to wave dash off a ledge right so see it where Yoshi is facing. If I want to wave dash off th to the left, right, you can wave dash off and you can let go of your direction on the stick. And I can't get my wave dash timing now because I've been playing with Fox. Um, but you don't have to keep the stick down and to the left to slide off that ledge because when you're going backwards, there's no check for what's called a teeter. So when you go to the ledge, see how he's teetering? That's a special animation that only happens on the ledge and only happens while you're facing forward. So, same thing applies to wave landing. I mean, wave dashing off the ledge. If I let go of my direction, I'm going to teeter there. And so that's kind of useful because you can purposely get your way from one side to the ledge to the other while wave dashing. No matter how far your wave dash is going to go, it can be really far. But if you do it at the very edge of the front of the ledge, you won't slide off. Man, I cannot wave dash today. Um, 
I held too long, but yeah, you can get into that teeter, and so that actually can be annoying if you're trying to like do a quick movement off the platforms because you'll randomly just stop because a lot of time when you're um, trying to do like advanced movement, you're trying to click and let go um, and change directions often, and so yeah, basically that teeter right there is just something you need to know if you wonder like why it happens or why you see people wave, uh, wave dash off platforms with their back facing usually um, and not forward. Why is that lagging? Um, but yeah, so that's why is that if you're facing back you don't get any accidental teeter uh, or teeter cancels as I call it, I'm pretty sure. And so it's the same way, like I said, on these real ledges, um, if you're not facing them you can easily drop off them if you're facing them you'll teeter if you let go of the stick but if you keep holding forward you can slide right off them it's just about letting go of the stick or not so that was me letting go that was me not so you can still slide off them um facing the same direction it just comes out to a matter of um holding that stick that way and for me personally i like regaining control of my stick as soon as I wave dash, so I often let go before I get off the platform. Um, so yeah, it's just a habit, it's something you have to like keep in mind uh, when doing a lot of like platform movement and trying to like do fancy uh, wave dash on and off of them. Um, and yeah, so the next thing is going to be actually a pretty easy one, but this stuff is still knowledge that's useful. So. I'll touch more on this um, in the later half of this video, but essentially these are the only legal stages in tournament and in Melee it's not like the newer games where you can change them and have like special forms, no these are the only versions of the stages, so Battlefield, Final Destination, Dreamland, Pokemon Stadium, Fountain of Dreams, and um, Yoshi Story, these are all usually referred to as, you know, um, well, Battlefield is just called Battlefield. Final Destination is called FD. Dreamland is called Dreamland. Pokemon Stadium is just called Pokemon. Uh, Fountain of Dreams is just called Fountain. And then Yoshi's Story is called Yoshi's. Uh, that's just like terminal or like lingo that doesn't actually matter. But basically, um, Pokemon Stadium can't be a starter. So when the two players who are playing each other decide to pick what stage to start with, you basically ban, um, you know, stages to decide which one is played on first well pokemon stadium is not playable until it's counter picked so basically the loser of the match picks the next uh, stage to play on and that's the only time pokemon stadium can be picked is as a counter pick it can be a starter so it's totally out of the question for the first game of a set but after that it can be picked so and also they can agree to go there um i'm pretty sure uh it doesn't matter like if you just both agree to go to Pokemon on the first game. I don't think it matters, but maybe it does in like top, top level tournaments. But yeah, so the next thing is why shield dropping is important. And if I still have Yoshi selected, this would be a great example. So Yoshi actually has infamously bad shield options. So a shield option basically means what you can do out of shield. And so Yoshi's egg particularly is, you know, really kind of crummy because like to be actionable after the roll that's a long time i mean and i don't think you're even invincible necessarily during like a lot of that roll um so basically if yoshi's holding shield you have a couple options one of them is to actually light shield um, i'll put a video of yoshi tech in the description a lot of this stuff i'll put like more in-depth non-asmr type videos for it but this is just kind of me um i guess consolidating what's the word like refining a lot of information just so you can get the gist of it without having to look it up yourself so um so yeah if he attacks me and i'm light shooting i want him to smash attack i guess that works but see i'm sliding when he's attacking me um because i'm light shooting with yoshi um basically this is a good option for yoshi because it's unexpected um and that's so basically just i wish i could make him smash attack but um yeah, if you're holding a light shield, like the light light shield, um, which just means pressing lightly on the trigger, like a fully pressed, you can hear me click it, that's fully shielded, it's hard to tell with Yoshi, but with a usual character, it's just the bigger and smaller shields, um, the, I guess the full shield is more opaque than a light shield, but, anyway, if you find
find yourself on the ground with Yoshi and you don't have a lot of options um, in your shield because he can't actually jump out of shield. He's the only character that can't do that because he has a weird shield. He has an egg, not a shield. And so, basically, if you're on a platform as Yoshi, though, the best way for you to get down from that platform if you're holding shield because sometimes you want to shield was not you're on a platform it's safe because you can shield drop and a shield drop basically lets you instantly perform a move um out of your egg which otherwise you have to let go and then do something which look how long the animation takes i'm gonna um i guess what's, what's a move i could do or buffer i'll just be spamming the b button you'll see like how long it takes to get a move out it doesn't look like that long but it is like that whole opening animation like all the way to that point really like i couldn't do anything um but if you're on a platform you can shield drop and shield dropping um or you, you could also light shield and let them push you off the platform so if they attack you instead of grabbing you they can accidentally push you off like that um which i guess helps you but yeah um if you shield drop which is a technique where you just kind of roll your stick down um while in shield on a platform, you can drop through the platform instantly uh, while holding your shield still. And so this basically lets you do quick options out of shield because like right there, I just up aired because I was platform dro or shield dropping and then instantly inputting an up air. Um, that's the importance of shield drop in my first video. Uh, so obviously for Yoshi, it's extremely useful because other characters can jump out of shield. So like it gives Yoshi another shield option they otherwise wouldn't have. So that's really important. Um, for Yoshi, but it's still important for other characters because it basically allows you to safely, um, or at least most safely, um, go for an option uh, on a platform or in your show when you otherwise wouldn't have any options. So, now, um, another thing that I actually didn't even know until really recently is that you can use the C stick to drop off the ledge. And some of you might be thinking, like, oh, duh, like, of course you can drop the C stick off the ledge, but like, that to me isn't necessarily intuitive. I mean, I get that like the C stick control other things, like it affects your DI, it affects um, I don't know what else, honestly. Um, I think it affects your. No, I don't know. Um, but yeah, basically it. It's just really interesting. So if you look at the, my uh, thing up top, you'll see I push the C stick. Well, of course, he knocks me off. Um, but yeah, I use the C stick. Oh my god, Mario, stop. Um, can let you drop down without fast falling. So otherwise, um, if you're on the ledge and used your directional stick, so the big, you know, control stick, the gray one, um, to get down and you may hold down, you would always fast fall, but with a C stick you can press down and not fast fall. Um, obviously, as far as like letting go of the ledge, I don't know if the animation is any different, which direction you hit on the C stick for it, but yeah, um, but yeah, so another thing would be, but yeah, so here's more kind of like not useless information. Uh, it depend, depends on who you play, really, but it can help you regardless, which is that Samus um, and her charge shot. So, Samus has a unique, I guess, thing about her charge shot, um, which is that no matter what, if you're in the air, it will shoot. So, you can only charge on the ground, and all that means is that you can run off and shoot it. Um, and, yeah, there's no, there's no way to charge it in the air. I think in future games, you can. I'm not sure. Um, I do plan on making like videos with some of the newer Smash games. Like, um, I do want to make one about Project M if you guys would be interested in that. Because uh, I've only just recently ever played that. Um, so yeah. But essentially, the reason this I guess could be useful um, would be for like mixing up what you're doing. That's something too. You don't. Sometimes you don't want to charge all the way because you can just scare your opponent by charging it and then instantly canceling it. So you can, oh yeah, that thing, I guess the C-Stick control, so you can use C-Stick to roll out of like certain options, shield and stuff like that. Uh, that's what I was trying to think of earlier. But yeah, you can just press your light shield and instantly cancel your charge. So if you keep it um, nearly all the way charged, it can be like still 
probably just as lethal um, otherwise, and they might not necessarily forget how strong it is, but the charge shot doesn't seem like it's on the table because your opponent's going to think, oh, he still wants to charge it more, and then guess what? I'm already ready to shoot it, so um, yeah, that's just useful information. Um, and another thing too with this super wave dash, which I kept failing at, or I couldn't give you a proper demonstration of in the last video, and that's because I was making a mistake, which is that if you are trying to do a super wave dash, you need to let go of your stick after you do the left-right input. Um, so you saw me do like a short one there, but I'll try to get a long one. Basically, the very frame that the same as Morph Ball is about to touch the ground. So like pretty much right here, you want to input, like depending on which direction you want to super wave dash in, uh, you want to input left, then right, or right, then left, the frame after each other, and then let go of the stick. So you want to go like left, right, instantly. Um, after one another, as soon as Samus Morph Ball touches the ground. So if you look at my uh, like a stick up top, you see what I'm kind of trying to do. I'm just like flicking it, um, to try to get it. So I got one right there, and this is just really useful. If, like I said in the last video, but I guess a really long time ago, but um, that if you're good at it, it's really useful. But otherwise, you're just gonna sit here and fail it over and over again. I said it's a frame perfect input, so it's not exactly, even if it's practicable, it's still um, not exactly consistent. really hard um if you couldn't tell by these mistakes but yes the next thing would be okay so this one is kind of interesting because basically this is just dependent on you as an individual um because in some ways what i'm about to tell you is the optimal way but in other ways, it isn't. So if you can move your thumb from like B and Y or B and X quick enough to get a short hop to laser off, then for you, it can be more consistent and more, um, it's actually so difficult. Yeah, but 
obviously tap jumping for this I think is more um, consistent, at least in the sense that if you actually want to get the blazer off, um, then that's optimal. But I don't think that it's a technique that's that worth, um, I guess, practicing. If it means that, like, the best you can consistently do it is still, like, I should take that back, because, like, honestly, just doing that is still what most people usually do anyway, so trying to get two off wouldn't really hurt. I'm just like using my other hand to do this and then it's like really easy because it's quick but um it's just the route the route is hard because you have to not press the a button but also press the y button quick enough to get yeah like that was normal but um yeah i don't know it's like it really depends like some techniques are more about your timing and then some techniques are just about being extremely quick so like wave shine isn't super like demanding as far as being like quick with your hands. It's just more like how good are you at timing what you're doing uh, consistently. Like because you're just sliding and then make sure you're pressing B at the bottom of like the semicircle. And for me this is like not that hard to practice um, after a while. I mean if you compare that compared to like the old video, I can wave shine it for like 20 times better now because I stopped like clawing for it. I just do it. Um, moving my thumb back and forth from B to Y. I'm not saying I'm like the greatest at wave shining, but I think if I practiced even more, I could probably do it like really consistently. But yeah, um, so the, one of the last things is going to be to basically, I'm like addicted to trying to do these dropped up lasers now. Is 
solely dependent on percentage of the opponent. And I get this is like still rudimentary, like very basic knowledge, but knowing what percentages that these are guaranteed at is really important. So like I'm pretty sure right now this is guaranteed that if I just even whatever DI the Jelly Puff has, um, actually technically they can smash DI up. I'm pretty sure out of the second hit of up air. But yeah, if I were to pick the Jelly Puff up and throw him, if I was good, I could double jump and get him. I don't practice this type of stuff. Um, but yeah, then that would be like a confirmed combo. Like, um, so long as they didn't smash DI out of it. Um, I'm pretty sure at most percents they can't even do that. Now, actually, the up air is stale. Let me shoot him with something. Oh, yeah, that's nothing, too, I didn't talk about. Um, I don't think it was the move staling. So, basically, when you use moves, like, this is just crazy how much stuff can come up in this game off the cuff. Um, this game is so filled with things. Um, let's see if I can get a destroy top laser off. I'm trying. I'm trying my hardest. Do they have that? They have like a build of melee where it's just the actual 
uh, like C itself, I'm not sure, but, um, anyway, ignore this stuff, you don't care about programming, but, yeah, basically, um, people have already done a lot of, like, work when it comes to the offsets of certain things, so, for instance, like, I actually had to find Fox to shine myself, because I actually missed the part of the thread that had that in there, so I actually, like, changed a ton of stuff to try to find it, but, um, which was a really big waste of time, but anyway, so Yoshi, for instance, says break the star, uh, break the target stage, I decided to go in, because I wanted to change the target, and I didn't see them as a texture, um, so I went in, found these, so, uh, I'm not sure if anyone had ever changed these before, I mean, someone probably has, but yeah, I just made them kind of like Pop-Tart colored, so now I have this Pop-Tart kind of Yoshi with these, uh, Pop-Tart break the target, so I thought that was kind of cool. Um, I was also thinking about doing a video if you guys would want this, um, would be, look at his leg, Jesus, did you see that? Um, but a video of, like, me doing a full mod, like, front to end, I'm not sure, like, the legality of that, because, um, yeah, I don't know if you're allowed to show, like, how to mod, I mean, I guess you would be, but, like, I also feel like you wouldn't be, um, because you're showing, like, what is, I guess, copyrighted, like, files and stuff like that, um, but yeah, I could definitely make a video, or, like, even a series about, like, basically, I, I thought about this, and let me know, because like, obviously if you're watching to this point, you're somewhat of a loyal viewer, but, um, so I, like, basically value your opinion more about what you'd want to see from the channel, but basically, like, imagine, a series where, I mean, I'm not exactly the best artist or something like that, but just going through every single character and choosing a costume, so this is the, the um, idea of it, right, would be, so there's teams in the game, like there's um, red team, blue team, and green team, so every character has like a red, blue, and green outfit, so I would leave those alone for the sake of, like if you still want to play teams on that file, that skin wouldn't be replaced by a modded version, so I'd pick a color like this black one or the pink one, I guess that's the pink one, um, then I'd pick like the black one or, um, the white, like, actually I'll probably leave the white one because it's the normal one, but, yeah, I'd probably take this one and change it, um, and do that for every character, basically take the skin of theirs, it doesn't matter, so like his Wario skin or his, like, uh, me and my friends call this like Travis Scott Mario, but anyway, um, I would take one of those that's not of the original color set that like matters for teams and then change them so same thing like luigi god my computer's lagging bad um but yeah so i would change like probably this outfit um yeah i guess it's the only one that's not important right yeah i would change um this outfit and just do that for all the characters make a custom skin and then basically release a giant mod pack with like all skins that have been made on the channel um like through the video series so it'd be like a you know 26 i think it was 26 1 2 3 4 5 6 7 8 9 10 11 12 13 14 15 16 17 18 19 20 21 22 23 24 25 and then zelda is chic as well so 26 yeah so it'd be a 26 part kind of series where we basically just go in and mod uh, every single character and giving them like custom either animations plus skins or just maybe a multitude of different things but at the very least um yeah do like a fleshed out full mod because this isn't an exactly full mod like for instance if you see the yoshi little icon in the bottom left is still not changed i would have to change that and then when i go off screen you can also tell for like a half a frame where i didn't color in that sprite that is only shown when you go off screen that's actually a 2d sprite of the character it's not the actual 3d one um so stuff like that like all the minor changes and also like the reflection mapping also didn't change the shoes on this yoshi like there's a bunch of stuff that would go into um modding each character so just let me know if you guys want to see maybe just one video about modding or uh a series even if that went well um I, I would definitely think it'd be a fun thing to watch just like it wouldn't be too like um like condensed or like showing me basically color every single like texture it would be mostly like a combination of edits plus like me talking about my idea on what i'm doing so for instance like if i make this like pop tart shell which is what only take like um maybe a minute or two to actually change that texture um 
like, yeah, basically, like, show it once it's finished and stuff like that, like, a sped up process, like, there's an art channel called, um, Draw With Jazz Up, and he doesn't, like, do full form art, he just does it, um, like, a kind of quickly spliced edit, and so I could put, like, maybe two or three hours worth of modding into, you know, 25 minutes or so worth of video, um, but yeah, I would, I would just get your feedback, I guess, after I would make a full, like, video, like a huge one of just me modding a, a whole character from start to finish, um, and yeah, so, anyways, I hope you guys enjoyed and learned something, I'm sure you did, um, because this stuff is very, like, um, plentiful, I guess, melee knowledge is, like, there's tons of stuff to learn in melee, so, yeah, um, I hope you guys enjoyed, and if you haven't subscribed yet, and you want to see more melee, or just leave video suggestions or whatever, please do that, um, even if you're not necessarily going to stay around and watch, like, um, and even if you didn't like the video, uh, I'd still like constructive criticism, just for the sake of, like, making the videos better for everybody else who's watching, um, so yeah, leave those down in the comment section, and I'll see you guys next time.
sex booty properly. Um, this is behind the scenes footage right here of activating 20XX and turning the widescreen mod on. If you're seeing this, that means you stayed to the end of the video. So congratulations, you're special. Um, I forget yet to turn my lip. Let's see, this looks crazy. Um, 